Uh, so close. Come on! Pack gun fire! Pack gun fire! Grenade goes off, kills a model. Pack gun, you mother fire! Hello everyone, this is a gray shot 170 bringing you another CH2 replay. This is a 1v1 on uh, Wait, what map is this again? Farmanville approach. We got uh, tab DGF versing Exerito Vermelho All right, I'll just call you uh, Exerito Exerito and or DGF submit this replay if you Yes, you. If you would like to submit this replay, please submit to GreatShotProductions at gmail.com. Email down below. And I may take a look. Also, I take plays of the week, awesome moments, etc. And ideas for my challenge series, essentially, that I not break the game, but uh, try to see what ridiculous scenario can fight another ridiculous scenario. So if you would like to try that, absolutely. Let's see that in the comments down below or the email that you will send me in the near future. Now then, let's see how things go. British opening fire on the German MG, which went a little too far forward for its own good. Pioneer squad grabbing the fuel. Now then, on the far left, we have Grandiers grabbing the point. Very, very cool. Uh, again, uh, resource-wise, again, we can see here that Tab is going deep and hard. Most likely to stop the German Wehrmacht from pushing on him. Which, by the way, it is a Wehrmacht versus a British. Uh, by the way, let's double-check their ranks real quick. See how much time. Technically, as... Exorito has more playtime, but we'll see if that comes into effect. Or, if uh, possibly uh, DJF comes back to turn the, and turn the tide. Now, Exorito is grabbing territory over here, but it's not connected. MG's being set back up. He hasn't, no, neither side has lost units uh, yet. We have an MG here. It could be easily neutralized if they could sneak up on it and possibly, uh, well, or maybe get some mortar hits in. Uh, sneak up with the flamethrower, I should probably say. Or maybe you smoke to get close. We have British trying to decap that fuel, which right now is helping supply the German war machine. Again, neither side has a lot of resources right now. We can see with uh, DJF, he's looks like playing the resource game. The reason I say that is because he's going tactical support. Um, so this Exorito, we can see here it's a lot of support abilities. Great for healing, uh, getting more infantry. Great for protecting infantry. Great for taking on placements, like an MG in a building with the flame attack. Artillery is pretty good, and sector artillery is great for defense. Now, on the flip side, we have this, which is meant for, again, support with the air supply. Crocodile is a great heavy tank. Forward observation is great air strikes. Field recovery is great for getting supplies. No joke, uh, uh, literally, you could get um, an equivalent to... Free upgrades for a unit, just getting, built, uh, getting resources off, let's say, a heavy tank carcass. So it's really worth it, honestly, uh, if you can use it correctly. Now, if you're always under fire, you're not going to be able to use it. Um, Vickers machine gun looks like it's going to open fire on this position. Good idea, just get the troops out. British infantry, though, did take some hits, and I, he could take the point, but I don't think he wants to use it for another engagement. So, let's see. Yeah, the field recovery, by the way, is that's the thing you can scavenge off vehicles. It's still, they're, they're essentially uh, very similar to other engineers. They still have the AT grenade. But, like I said, they, they're very good at just getting those resources off the ground. Um, anyway, uh, DJF also went with the platoon, so we could possibly see, I, mean, I would see an armored car, more likely than not. Um, x is going with, let's say, he's getting a battle phase one right now. And he's pushing on right. Looks like he's staying away from those MGs. Smart move. And trying to grab the territory he can. Now, I will say this. Um, we can see resource-wise that it's still pretty damn close. And with this fuel, it's going to be even. So, very interesting to see that. Again, we're probably not going to see many engagements. It's just going to be them trying to fight the resource war. And try to keep their units alive. In a 1v1 environment, it is about unit preservation. It's about keeping your men alive and aware on the battlefield. You could blob, but then you could lose the resource game or fall into a trap. Here, you don't have to worry about mo as many mines and uh, demos as, let's say, a Soviet player. But the the British can still lay mines. And they're pretty effective. Um, and then also, the Wehrmacht can lay S minefield and also can lay the Teller mine. But again, they're also way more expensive, so you have to watch out about that. The reason I say the Soviet is Soviets play cheap mines everywhere, and then the, you also have to worry about the demo in bu brush, uh, bushes. Now, he's in this building. Unfortunately, one model's not even engaging, so he might actually win that fight if he can get the cover. Or he fights over here, 
And he is. There's Remember, guys, if there's a door, there's no window. And that means they're not going to be able to fight out it for whatever reason. Now, we have Pioneer Squad opening fire with the machine gun and grenadiers over here. This unit's going to fall back. A little piece of debris fell off as well. British forces are also just chilling from a distance. Might be able to hit them if he aimed forward. I would assume he would. Yes, he does. It's barely in range, but he would. MG's going to open fire. Hot damn. That's, uh, again, he's going to hit that MG. I'm oh, sorry, not MG. The infantry and push them back. So, good job in there. Again, he's covering his men while they make a retreat. And the Grandiers continue with their advance. Now, coming through here again, we do have some dead Germans. And he, but Eddie could be moving up to get some cover. Rifle Grenade barely misses target, but he's still advancing pretty damn well. That's the enemy base in the background, so it's not going to take too much time for them to reinforce. Grenade pushes him at cover. He's going to fall back. I still... Well, he's not... He is in cover, but he's not. So, as you can see, he's not, like... The cover's not... Is directional, so he's in cover, but it's not helping him. So, yeah. The Brit might win this. Up, oh, Grenadier's coming in. Never mind. With those two men, yeah, it's not going to. It's close. Oh, Rifle Grenade coming in from the distance. Great squad wipe by Xerito and pushes the Brit back. That's one unit lost for the Vermok. I'm sorry, for, the, for the, the British compared to none for the Vermok so far. Which, by the way, he's saving up a lot of resources. I'm actually kind of curious why. We have light vehicles and a pack. If I had to guess everything, he's probably going to build a scout car. Yeah, he'll, what, what he'll do is he'll get a scout car and a mortar half-track. That's what I would make the assumption for. He's also building a building here for medical. Again, you want to make sure you heal your men. The Brit has that with the medic squad, so he can heal his forces. Though, again, he, can, he has to be out of combat for that. Meanwhile, the German player can heal his troops when they head back to base, so that's a positive. And although he doesn't have the resources right now to get that upgrade. Although, I assume to expect uh, artillery support in mid to break this up. Um, we have an armored car, which is exactly what I thought he would go. Again, in this large of a map, you want to make sure the Vermont can't take you down with the scout car or the half track. Because that can be very deadly very quickly. And the, and the armored car is a great counter weapon to the light vehicles. British grabbing the territory on left. I like how there's territory that's not even grabbed yet. Like, this back slot has just not been hit. It, it's actually quite funny. Uh, Alright, there, there's Royal Engineers. They're going back to the island. Oh, boy. Yeah, actually, you know what? I would say it's an island because it's surrounded by... Almost surrounded. Okay, I, I would say it's surrounded by water. There's enough water here. So, congratulations, guys. You're taking the point. It's like, we're at least we're here and not in this nice, quiet area and don't have to worry about, you know, all the other shit everywhere else. We can just look at the river and just enjoy ourselves. Now, unfortunately, though, Flamethrower did exactly what I said it would. Got close and annihilated the MG. I was looking at the peaceful unit in the corner. Now, they stole the MG. That's a big win for the Vermok. So far, two big wins right now. Brit needs uh, some wins. Unfortunately, his uh, armored car won't be able to advance because of the fact that, well, there's Grenadier Squad there. And if he gets too close, it Panzer Fauster in his future. He also has a lot of Grenadiers, so that could be an issue with them popping out Grenadiers in distance. Unfortunately, he's going to have to retreat. Armored car is actually giving chase. I think that's a bad move. I honestly do, because good. Uh, he could honestly come up and just Panzerfaust it. I'm actually surprised he's not moving his troops, honestly. There he goes. Expect mass Panzerfaust. Oh, wait. He only has enough for one. And uh, maybe two. He did two. Ah, damn. He needs a pack gun. He honestly... If he had a pack gun there, the Brit would have been crippled. Uh, DGF would literally not have enough resources to continue this game. Honestly, I think he should stay back uh, for the time being and get a pack gun. Because uh, while he will do very well, and actually, you know what? If he gets armor-piercing rounds with that MG, that might be enough. Because that would be a cheap munitions he could use against this. And if it can't escape, boom, bada, bing, he got that covered. So, we'll see what happens in that regard. Although, Grenadiers... I mean, the, the Vermok has captured a good chunk of the map. They, Except for this point. He needs to recap, like... Hold on. There we go. He recapped that. Now he's getting munitions. He's actually winning overall most uh, against the British. So, good job. For a mock player. Again, so far, with more tactical victories against the Brit than, than the Brit himself. Now, also, the Brit has this point decaptured uh, or decrewed. He could also get in his building with the MG, use armor piercing rounds, and do a lot of damage if he could keep it alive, not under, not under all the sustained fire of all the Brit forces. Just a way to kill this mortar pit if he needs to. He still has his own mortar pit, and he's also getting a pack gun. Although, he could very easily get the next battle phase and then start working his way up to armor. But it looks like he's going to give himself a scout car. I could see that. 
if combined with all the other resor resources and you can con uh, can find the Brit, which he's doing, the Brit's mainly in mid now, um, then he can win this, but we'll see. Now, unfortunately, if he's going to fight in mid, the Brit is, con uh, c you know, put most of his forces and he's also guarded by the Mortar Pit. Any case, uh, we got the uh, German infantry pushing on up with the pack gun right behind it. And then MG here, you don't have to worry about that pack gun, though, unfortunately, actually, one nice thing is if he gets... Over here, the, he could have direct shot on it. Or or Armored Car could go on the flank and try to hit it and get to Panzerfaust. Dude, get the fuck out of here. I, I, re, I'm really... Oh, Scout Car's going in. Pack Gun's not redeploying for some reason. That's a lot. Okay, so now we have a loss for the Germans. And with the smoke, he's able to escape. Pack Gun almost kills it, but Scout Car barely manages to get the hell out of there. Good job with that Scout Car. Meanwhile... Just some light forces are going on right. Uh, again, the German player needs to figure that stuff out. Now, Scout Car going in for the kill. We'll see if he actually manages it. It's going to be close. It's going to be really close. Getting the shots gets the kill. And the Scout Car will probably make it. Oh my god, he made it. He actually made it. We have an armored car killer right here. Good job, little Scout Car. Now, don't die from a random shot to the ass. You're going to die to a random shot to the ass. Oh, pull back. Pull back. Oh, my God. You were the luckiest scout car. You were so damn lucky. But you did kill the armored car. That's a big loss for the uh, British because this is 230. That scout car is, I believe, 280. You Panzerfaust to the building. That's a waste. Don't do that. Uh, pack gun, long range fire is way better. MG it over time. MG is also not watching his flank. Also, pack gun, move over here to hit this. Like, I don't understand. Uh, meanwhile, luckily, the base MG is actually going to help sur save that MG over here. While this MG opens fire against, I believe, that unit along with this MG over here. Meanwhile, again, more Panzer... Stop Panzerfausting. You're not going to do that much damage. Moving at the pack gun would be way better. I, I don't understand why you don't move it over here and have the MG guard it. But whatever. Uh, that attack failed because you Panzerfausted. And these guys will escape. Meanwhile, the Vermark still has a slightly larger army, especially when everything is remanned. Um, he also has the manpower for it. DJF, kind of uh, a little bit bare, but he could if he wanted to. Looks like he was going for a pack gun. He didn't get it. Air supply might be his best move because that way he can get the those. Yep, there he goes. That way he can get the resources coming in, which will, he'll do here. And he can get the pack gun and all sorts of stuff for like a quarter of the cost. So we'll see. He got himself some medical supplies. What else did he get? He got some more packages. Uh, AT gun? Uh, yes, we got ourselves an AT gun and a mortar that actually popped off a shot. It's a ghost mortar. Any case. Uh, but yeah, with, with this he can help heal his men. And I believe give him a small boost. He can get the AT gun, which again, this is a quarter of the cost. Not quarter. A, a, about a third? Oh, like, okay, more than a third. Like 40% the cost? Okay, with the mortar, yeah, it's a lot cheaper overall of getting those both weapons so honestly yeah it was worth it to get this just to reman that stuff and get it back up plus he has another mortar which is pretty good now he might be able to outpace the uh german player now if the german player can please just move up the pack to hit this base that would really help him out seriously anyway uh mg is trying to push back the scout car remember it has native armor piercing rounds luckily the mortar um and I guess all the fire the German player has been doing over time has been killing this mortar pit. It is barely alive. MG not able to hit it. Scout car moving back so the MG can now assist and hit it. Uh, bit of a dumb move. Oh my god, he could go for this. Oh, he's gonna. He's so close. He's so close. Uh, wow. AT got missed. Might be able to kill it in time. Oh, AT grenade's going out. <laughs> AT grenade goes through and hits the bush. Oh, boy. Panzer Grenadier is right over here. Oh, yep. The seat. You're getting a ton of fuel from it. And they're decommissioning it for additional resources. That's pretty damn sweet. So, it's not a lot of resources. Oh, oh good bundle grenade. Knocks that sucker out. Dude, this thing is so close. Like, seriously, move up the MG. Like, the, I, I, I don't understand why this guy is being so hesitant. Like, move up the pack gun for Pete's sakes. Or, or move up the Panzer Grenadiers. I know you're trying to take the point. But it's better to kill the mortar pit than uh, have it kill you. Anyway, the MG on the other side by the mill is actually opening fire on him now. So that might suppress... Oh, nope, he's alive. Mortar half-track's now moving back up. I get, oh, the scout car died. 
uh, over here. Oh, yeah, okay, so now he only has one light vehicle. So he's lost two vehicles at this point. Okay. No, the reason I bring that up is just for the fact that he's wasting a lot of light vehicles. I mean, to be fair, he still has a ton of resources, and if he jumped up, he could... He could get a, like, an Oswind or something in the next few minutes. Meanwhile, the, the Brit just got this upgrade. It's going to be a little bit longer unless he starts getting territory uh, back. Grandier is trying to push forward against that NG. I, lo I love how it's just literally an NG war. Um, this guy could go on the right here, but no, let's go on the main road with negative cover. Anyway, luckily artillery fire is hitting that from the mortar half track. He doesn't have a vehicle to go hit him anymore. He has to actually hit him with the AT gun. Which we'll see how that goes. He did upgrade his men, five man squads, and he does have the upgrade for additional weapons. So I'll be very surprised if we don't start seeing the Brits with Brens or, or the engineers with Piots. Engineers, I give Piots because of the fact that they have. I'm actually really surprised he doesn't get more, but maybe he's just trying to keep that as heavy cover. A little weird. Any case, uh, the, the, the big reason I would say that is because they're more defined for anti armor with their AT grenade, while the Brits are more designed to anti infantry. Um, but, uh, you can give him Piots, you can, I just, that's just not me. Finally, he moves up the pack gun, Jesus! Alright, pack gun will open fire, possibly kill it. Oh, they need range. Oh, there we go, got range, pack gun, open fire. Oh, he is targeting vehicles, that's why. He's targeting vehicles, he has to manually click it. So... Panzer Grenadiers now with Panzer Treks moving on in. He, again, he has a ton of munitions. Also gonna drop the plane right here for smoke cover. Uh, so close. Come on! Pack gun fire! Pack gun fire! Grenade goes off, kills a model. Pack gun, you mother fire! There we go. Jesus Christ, was that so hard? Uh, meanwhile, Mortar Half Track again also providing that support. Doing a damn good job. Mortar Pit will definitely cost. Uh, a lot for the Brits to bring back. That's 400. He, that, I don't think he would even want to go for that. Uh, meanwhile, the German player, I think, did go for the upgrade. He did. The question is, is he going to go for the next upgrade? Or is he going to go for the, like, medium armor? Is he going to go for more advanced stuff? Or is he going to stay up with more baseline medium armor? We'll see. Against a Brit, this guy is very good infantry. He may want to get himself a Brumbar and cover that with AT weapons. Um, that, that would be my idea. Again, let me know what you would put down in the comments down below. But I, I, I think a Brumbar would be best in this scenario because of the lighter... Uh, oh, not lighter, but a lot of British infantry, maybe not in the best cover, that Brumbar could snipe or hit from afar. And with the Panzer Grenadiers and Pack Gun providing support... Even this thing, it could provide uh, armor-piercing rounds to armor. And if you check out my latest video, or one of my latest videos, you'll see how much armor-piercing rounds does to even the heaviest tank. It may not be best, but it will do some. Mortar's on standby. I do like how he has all this here, and he's only using it if he needs to. Anyway, MG along with the double grenadiers are going to light this sucker up. Uh, I'd, okay, a little bit of a gamble. Oh, no, he, he saw him get back in. Okay, fair play, Ex Exorito. Fair play. Uh, meanwhile, uh, again, DJF is slowly gaining back his army over time. But we'll see how long that lasts. Also, don't double up like this because one mortar and it could really do a lot of damage to you. Meanwhile, again, on the flip side, DJF has actually slowly gotten more resources. Now it's a bit more of an even fight on both fuel and munitions with the Brit actually getting a slightly better in, in some areas. Unfortunately, though, I think the German will win this fight. Oh, no, he backed up. Oh, he didn't lose any models, though. You have the MG still here with the pack gun. Mortar half track uh, could definitely do a lot of damage toward it. Or this. Move up and rifle grenade it. Move up and rifle grenade it. Move up and rifle grenade it. You know where it is. Okay, at least he's moving the MG. That's good. Panzer IV. Uh, uh, um, let me think about this. Let me think about this. Most likely, DJF is saving up. And if I had to guess, he's... Okay, so he needs the, the anvil or hammer for this thing. So he probably won't go for the crocodile initially. He probably won't. Um, he also went with another mortar half-track. So he's real... It can be fine. The re uh, I'm hesitant. Here's my re rationale. The Panzer IV is really good against infantry. And it can be good against medium armor. But if DJF is going to what I think he's going to be going for, which is going to be the Firefly, based on the amount of fuel he has, that could be an issue. 
flamethrower unit opening fire on the, uh, this run engineer squad. Like I said, again, they have the AT grenade. They actually have a smoke grenade too, which is pretty damn good. And the, the salvage ability. Also, they can, uh, again, uh, if you haven't checked the update, they can tear down the placements. Which I've yet to see anyone really do. But I guess that would be for the person who built a mortar pit way in the back and decides, eh, I probably should destroy that. Or get rid of it. Now, you don't, I don't believe you get resource for it, but you do open up your pop cap. He's probably going to throw an AT grenade, I would assume. But it's not going to do all that much. Panzer IV, uh, getting the MG upgrade. Now, he's going to kill this thing quite quickly. The question is, uh, will it be able to escape? It looks like it will. Okay. But it looks like this squad will be able to recap this area. Meanwhile, in mid, it looks like the uh, German player is trying to hold that point at all costs. But like I said, uh, the mortar half tracks are definitely causing hell for the British infantry. And he should be able to hold it, but I don't know for how long. Again, the biggest issue I see is the right flank. There's nothing guarding a good right flank. Panzer IV taking full advantage, but that that Firefly is about to come out. And if it comes out and he, he hits hard with it, this Panzer IV is a goner real quick. But Panzer IV doing exactly what I need to, exploiting a flank, knocking out two support equipments and pushing them back. Meanwhile, the mortar half tracks are causing hell for the Brits in mid. Again, reminiscent to the... Mortar pit that was causing hell for the German player. But uh, x Rito could turn the tide if he takes all these territories. Honestly, he has enough munitions. I would mine it. Place an S minefield here. Do you have a... Oh, no, no. He has minesweepers. Never mind. He has minesweepers. That would... Uh, that, that if he, Especially if he keeps sending his stuff. Maybe just put, like, teller mines at these key choke point areas. Hopefully he doesn't notice. But, yeah, okay. He's placing mines. Good job. N I'm nice positioning. Point. They're trying to take it. Also grabbing some resources, although once again, I don't think the German player will just sit there and let him take it. Maybe he could also take this fuel as well, but it looks like he, the German player is slowly encroaching up uh, against TJF, and he has enough, he has a low bit reserve, and also he could do the uh, relief infantry, so if he starts losing a lot of men really quickly, he can start getting the reinforcements very easily, without too much of a cost, but we'll, we shall see. Panzer IV pushing a piece of debris in front of him. I guess he's like, this is mine now, I, I like this. I like this piece of debris. It's mine. He's still pushing it. He's still pushing it. He's still pushing it. And he brought it all the way back to base. Panzer IV getting an excellent shot. Hitting two models. Uh, models. So far, no upgrades for these guys. Panzer IV lighting him up. But the Firefly is moving in. Might be able to get a shot. Does not. Surprised, actually. Patcon should probably go over to support him. And honestly, I would be very shocked to see if a large contingent of the Grandiers and Panzer Grandiers don't come over to fight him in this front. There's no MG. There's no staticness to the other fronts. I think he would want to engage. Uh, Grandiers are coming up to this point. You do have the MG, which I think was suppressing him a low. Oh, no, this MG too. He might be able to decap it, which would be pretty big. Because, again, you, it would stop the, the British from getting too much fuel. Ah, barely able to stop it from being decapped. Firefly is still here along with the mortar. Uh, let's see. Right now, Packon's still on standby. Let's see. We got the Panzer IV on standby. Double mortar pits abound and hitting mid. Doing a pretty damn good job. Again, he's going to do a lot of damage to that MG if he doesn't pull back now. And luckily, he is. And he'll pull back to a safer distance. Um, AT gun, though, also now being hit. Again, these things are very deadly and very mobile, which is very difficult. But luckily, they're on top of each other. So one good strike, and you can knock out both, theoretically. Meanwhile, he Panzer Grenadier is moving on in, but the MG is still there. He's like, oh, shoot. Fires Panzer Shrek's tree, I believe, took the shot. Royal Engineers getting right again with, 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 the, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, with these forces, you, mines may not be the best idea, but I, maybe you still place them. Luckily, Gradier's moving in, getting a nice rough grenade. Unfortunately, this one's still there, so you might, it might start suppressing soon. Uh, British infantry moving on in. That'll be extra fuel for the Germans, but right now, uh, with the munitions going to the Brits, yeah, they're going to need anything they can get. I, I, I'll i be curious. I don't think I... Yeah, you can't fire a rifle grenade. He could fire a bundle grenade. So, let's see. Nice shot. Destroys the guy's cover, but no, he still has a little bit. We do. He did lose a Panzer Shrek. Mortar pits on standby, opening fire, missing the shots. Panzer IV, I don't know where... Oh, it's it's back here. Okay. Just chilling. MG's lighting this sucker up. He could throw a Gammon Bomb, which would actually do quite a bit of damage into the building. He has a little more limited range. 
But he could throw it. He's very close. Oh, no, he can't. He's just out of range. This guy can, though. This guy's walking straight up. And, uh, yep, there it goes. Oh, hits top of the building. Gets out of the building. And there goes the building. So, good job on the German player right there. Good job. Meanwhile, we have uh, Mortar Pits still. Again, I don't know why they're both here, but okay. Firefly's still on standby. Again, this thing was, uh, like, fully upgraded. So, we could see a good strike. However, Exorito is enough for sector artillery. That could be very dangerous for the Brit if this thing is launched. And he's, and he's in the zone of impact. That could be... Very devastating for him. Though, on the flip side, DJF uh, could be building himself a front base soon. Although, it would be risky with the mortar pits. But he could uh, and do activate this ability. The forward observation post. And the reason I say that is because then he could use the munitions he's currently gaining. And use that to c tear up the German line. Um, if he needs an emergency air strike or precision bomb strike. Or whatever he could use against the German player. Because I don't think the German would expect that. With uh, his current loadout. But we'll see. Because again, when you when you see this faction, you don't immediately think direct strike. But it does have that option if used correctly. Grandier is being pushed back by the MG and the Brit. I'm surprised this MG isn't moving up anymore. But the uh, also you have to worry about the Firefly right there. Which again, very smart at being pre uh, preemptive against it. That we have another pack gun moving up. Second pack gun moving over on left. Mortar pit just lighting this area up. 17 pounders being made. Kind of in, uh, a little bit farther in the back. But I could see this as more of a last resort. Because um, I don't think it will... Actually, hot damn. Actually covers a good chunk of the map. Covers four points on the map. So if armor comes in, he has it covered. Never mind. It's actually really well positioned. I take that back. So armor will have to keep its distance. But that doesn't mean armor is completely... You still have to watch out. He'll still have to watch out. Plus, I think the MGs in the base will protect him. Protect it a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, a little bit. Meanwhile, Grenadiers uh, getting pushed back by a nice grenade. Another squad being pushed back, though. It was a good attempt. It did cut off some of the munitions on the right, so that's a good hit. Um, but alas, the Brits still captured that. Panzer Grenadiers on, still uh, need, to get, need to get some heals. Panzer four on standby. Again, Best idea would be to lure him into a double pack gun and try to smash him. Again, move one pack gun here. Actually, move both pack guns here and then try to engage. You only need one shot and then the double pack guns might be enough to uh, extremely cripple it. Now, you can get another Panzer IV. I am unsure about that. You could do very well, um, but the, with the 17 powder right there, it could tear you asunder. Uh, pack gun redeploying. This pack gun, I would also think, needs to redeploy. This one's going to fire straight through the hedges. Might be able to get a single shot. Does get a good shot on the Firefly. Probably will pull it back. No, he's not paying attention. Uh, second shot? No second shot. Though MG is lighting this sucker up. Oh, my God. Oh, border's coming down. Yeah, that, that MG uh, needs to pull back. I would say this game's a little bit more even. However, oh, nice second pack shot. Again, good pack 43. Oh, Panzerfaust coming in. Oh, uh, slow react. Oh, no, you're so lucky you missed. Because that, if that pack would have hit with you there, oh, yeah, you'd have been goner. Now this thing, set, he might think he's good, but or he might have still had 70 pounders. Like, yeah, I'm not falling for it. Or, again, he could also have the double mortar half track open fire against this thing. Maybe even drop fire on it, honestly. And that might be enough. He has a Cromwell being made as well. So, uh, if I was him, I might want to save up for a crocodile. That would be me, just to have something that could fight the Panzer IVs and take on the heavier infantry. We already know he went something with Comets, so he could go that as well. British infantry trying desperately to take that point. Uh, luckily, this guy's moving up real quick. 17 pounders coming over. Luckily, the bush is taking mo most of the shots. I think he realizes that. He knows he's being shot at by it. Oh, he used the special armor person grounds to fire through, but he dodged it. This guy is one step ahead. Well, maybe not. He's about to be hit. Damn good hit. It's almost half dead. Uh, needs to get the hell out of there. Could take one more shot if he's lucky. He is not lucky today, folks. He is not lucky today. Ooh. So, again, Panzer IV unable to kill the MG. Who makes a valiant escape. And while Although the Pioneers were able to take that point. Maybe even grab the Panzer Shrek. 
Second Panzer IV is right there. 70 Pounder is going to light him up. Uh, luckily, the Panzer IV will do way more damage against this Brit infantry and should be able to push it back. Meanwhile, the Pioneer Squad's over here. You still have to worry about... Oh, never mind. The MG retreated. Maybe he moved something over there. I didn't see it. Anyway, uh, Cromwell's coming over. I don't think... Oh, there's Pack Gun, but it needs to move up. It needs to move up immediately. Uh, Brit still has a decent army, though. Uh, again, has nearly full pop cap, but though still low on manpower. Good on munitions. Might designate one of them as a command vehicle to give a boost, but I'd be curious to see if he does that. Uh, Panzerfaust going out. We'll stop the Cromwell dead in its tracks. I don't think the Panzer IV... He, okay, he's going in for the engagement. I'm very curious as to why. Yeah, because again, we know there's still a Firefly. All right, you got, it looks like we have a AT gun moving back up. So again, armor is something you have to really watch out for. Though again, he still has the Panzer Shrek guys. And though I think he just moved them. I think he finally realized that he has those Panzer Shrek guys. Awesome. Meanwhile, Grandiers are pulling on back. Mortar half tracks opening fire on this position. I uh, might be able to push that guy back. Meanwhile, again, Panzer Grand is pushing on left. No heals. Guess he doesn't care. Sector Artillery could still be called in, so the, he still has the trick up his sleeve. Uh, DJF has not brought in his special, and I think he should. Um, honestly, putting a base like back here and then being able to call in an artillery strike if they push in too much, I think would be worth it. Uh, maybe he's just saving up for resources. I don't know. Anyway, we have Sector Artillery coming in, but alas, I don't think it's in a good position. I really don't. I mean, it's going to only affect the areas on left. Sure, I'll push him back on this point. So at least they'll stop him from taking the fuel. Which would hurt the British if they weren't already getting a decent amount of fuel. Yeah, this will be hit. So yeah, they're good. We got 20 more seconds of it, so this troop might get annihilated. He probably will be if he doesn't move. Oh, he's not moving. Hot damn. Oh, something died. Oh, there he is. Okay, so he is making it. So he is protecting the fuel. He has uh, no more time left on it, so that was it. I don't think that was worth it. Although, it looks like uh, the attack on right may have not... He lost something. I don't know where he lost those troops, but he did lose some troops. So DJF did lose some, uh, some forces, but overall, he's still doing pretty well. He's still near pop cap. Meanwhile, he'll probably upgrade this with the bonus uh, artillery strike. Meanwhile, again, they're chilled. They're desperately trying to grab that fuel, but alas, unable to. Cromwell, right up there, but again, Pack Gun could fire upon it. He does, gets good shot on Panzer IV on standby. We have another Pack Gun being made. So it looks like Exorito's like, okay, screw the armor. Let's go entirely, re let's rely entirely on the pack. We'll see how well that goes. Um, Pack Gun is literally aiming at this. If only he moved his Grand Ears up, he would actually see this and open and light it up. But alas, he's not doing it. Um, that kind, that, that's kind of horrifying, honestly. Can you see that? Can, oh my god, you can see the Pack Gun, but the Pack Gun can't see you. That's funny. That's actually quite funny. I, I think he realized, oh shit, there's a Firefly right there. Or is he firing through? I, that's a weird place for a pack because you're literally staring at a bush. Anyway, uh, multiple forces moving on in, but the MG stopping him. I don't know why he's moving his Royal Engineers. Maybe he wants it to die. I think he wants it to die. Yeah, he wanted it to die. That was a perp that was on purpose, I assume. We still have a lot of pack guns. MG is still opening fire. He's probably trying to stop them from decapping the star. Meanwhile, we have these random pioneers. I love this minefield right here. That's just an fu to anything that's not that infantry. Also, he might walk directly into MG if he's not paying close attention. Uh, anyway, speaking of not paying attention, pack guns need to move up and cover the Panzer IV if it attacks. Alas, smoke's going down on one pack. Second pack going down, but alas, really weird positioning. I'm un really unsure why he did that. Uh, second pack gun could still do direct fire, but not doing that. Uh, pa pa Again, if you rely on a pack, you still have to make sure it's, you know, can see. Luckily, there's two packs here. Should be able to fire. Oh, misses the shot, though Panzer Shrek's don't, and knock out the Cromwell. So honestly, that was about an even trade. Wait, Gammon Bob gets a good hit, though. So, the Brit is a little bit more down than Exorito, because again, Exorito still has a lot of manpower left, so he can bring back a lot of stuff. Does he have a heavier armor upgraded? He does not. Okay, Firefly's over here. Oh, this might be able to detect it. 
Oh, she- Oh, he lo he walked over and he lost the unit. Okay. Yep, I knew it. He would literally walk his men over and lose it in front of the MG. That's quite funny. 16 kills for the MG. Pretty damn good. Grandier's trying desperately to hold on to this point. Might be able to get a free bread. That would be pretty damn sweet. Grandier's with a bread gun and an MG42. Hot damn. That's some pretty damn good infantry. Uh, meanwhile, DJF again. I think now is saving up for the uh, crocodile. Do you have the upgrade here? I don't get the... It's only 10 fuel with 100 manpower? Dude, click yes to that. Because you have enough... Okay, there you go. You just did. Because you have enough to call on airstrikes for pretty... Uh, yep, again, a pretty good range. And if you do that right, you could probably hold on to this point very easily. Like, honestly, you could rush up troops right now, and I think you'd be covered. The 17-pounder is guarding you extremely well. Now, x I think, is making a very bad decision here. He's going with another Panzer IV. I'm not sure if that's the correct move. I don't think that would be. If I was him, and I know that a lot of people are like, oh, Grey Shot, you're already spamming, but uh, I would go with the artillery because you can put that behind your base. He doesn't have a direct strike that's that far reaching, and you could t honestly tear apart that 17 pounder. Maybe you're trying to use that to your advantage and be like, okay, he can have that 17 pounder that I think is taking up a, a, like a, t a fifth of his army. I think it's taking up a fifth of his army. Hold on. I actually have no idea how, mu how much population it has. I'm going to say it's a lot. We have, uh, by the way, uh, recon going overhead. I am assuming this is a precision bomb strike. Remember how I uh, said foreshadowing for a direct bomb strike? Well, hot damn. x uh, you just got played. Because that was a damn good arty strike that, yeah, he just used from the explosive. Plus, he used the recon air support for a little bit of recon. MG's guarding this area now. Fireflies engaging over here. Panzer Strikes need to move up immediately. There's no MG here. I like how he's just shooting it. And that's making him a target for the Firefly, which he needs to pull back now. Finally, he realizes Panzer Strikes did fire the armor, fires at the infantry. Sure, why not? Uh, dude, fire at the bigger threat. Like, I don't understand. Anyway, uh, Germans making some uh, big mistakes. Although, DJF still doesn't have a huge army. Technically, X Xerito still does. Although, he's falling back. I'm actually not curious as to why he's falling back. He could easily move over an MG. He has enough of them. And, like, this one's fallen far enough back. Move it up. Like, that would suppress this infantry and allow your great ears to win. But whatever the case may be, he actually was able enough to turn the tide to where the VP point leader is now the German rather than the Brit. So the, now DJF needs to start capturing the, the stars on the right in order to win this game. Also, I'm actually surprised the, the German has all this territory. Um, I mean, I get the 17 pounders helping him hold some of this, but like here, you figure it should be able to easily get. I mean, I get there's, oh, never mind. There's two MG. Like, do you have a bunker here? Move it. Oh my God. Anyway, whatever. Uh, Firefly is still on right. We're about to see a crocodile. I almost guarantee it. And I feel like that might be the, the game changer. Because we're seeing a lot of pack guns, but unless they all work together, that crocodile might be able to out DPS a lot, everything that this German player has. If this German player had a Panther instead of a, uh, a Panzer IV, I think that would maybe turn it a little bit more into his favor, but... Oh my god, get the kill. Get the kill, get the kill, get the kill! Oh, good shot. No retreat for the Brit. That being said, DJF, I think, is going to play the crocodile. He will, and this will be his last effort. Because he's losing a lot... And this is a big gamble. That's a very powerful unit that you're deploying. And you have to be very lucky that this uh, German player doesn't plan for an ambush or you hit a teller mine or overwhelmed by packs. Whatever the case may be. Or if you're, or if, if the, the German player's off his game, you could burn away half his infantry. Again, either way, it's a close game. I think the German player has a lot more to lose. Literally. He has like, let's see, five... 10, 12 compared to 5. So even if the brick gets that, he still has like half the number of units, I would say almost, that the German player has. But the German player, again, if he can use that numerical advantage against this crocodile, he should win. If he's going to blob, he will, he'll lose. Now, he is he is going around the flamethrower, so, and he is separating his men. That's a, that's a good start right there. He is pushing. I think that's also a bad idea. Panzerfaust going out, though. He might be able to cripple it. Nope, not enough. Not enough. Crocodile needs to pull back, though. We still have some troops over here. Pack guns on standby. I think a smarter move would be to bring it up. 
uh, to help out. They did recapture this point, but Pioneers are moving in to decap it. But I think the the German, uh, sorry, the Brits more focused on the right than the actual left. Uh, we'll see though. He does have enough for some uh, additional strikes if he wanted to. So we'll see if that works. Again, with the MG right here, that's going to suppress here. He has another MG here, which is once again a little bit weirdly placed by this thing guarding this area, but whatever. Uh, British forces being pushed back. He's probably going to lose his squad. Uh, Gibbon Bomb, if it's lucky, will get a model or two. Oh, damn. Got Almost got all four. Hot damn. But he did lose the men, so that was probably not worth it. Uh, we had the Panzer IV on standby, and the Grand Ears had the full back. Pack gun over here, along with an MG. I'm actually surprised the MG doesn't go over here so we can grab it real quick. Um, although he has a lot of front infantry, compared to the Brit, who only has one. And the one did guard over here, so he did do well there. Like, I'll give him credit. I'll why aren't you get? I guess he's not getting in the building because his idea is the fact that okay, if they and let's put if they bring the crocodile over here, I'll instantly die. So I can see why he doesn't go over there. Crocodile's still over here though, still totally fine. And right now DGF is slowly regaining his men. Xerito, I think, just realized he need more. He needs more armor. Um, let's see if he actually gets that. I I would get. I would start getting a panther if I was him. I have enough resources for it, and you have enough manpower. Also, really good. Look at this army. Very professional army here. A lot of veterancy. A lot of good kills. We have like 37 kills right there. Six with the Panzer Grenadiers. If he can... Oh, there's an MG here. That's not going to go well. But if he can overwhelm this stuff, he should be fine. Now, he has double pack gun like this. I would maybe move it up a little bit more. Uh, for better coverage. Now, he is grabbing this with the MG. It ballsy, but not a terrible move. Because he has more than enough men. And he's grabbing this area, but the MG is probably going to suppress him and stop him from capping it fully. I, I, I fully expect him to decap it, but I don't expect him... Oh, no, he actually didn't get it, most likely, because he's not at any cover. Royal Engineers giving that quick repair to the Crocodile. Oh, Crocodile's advancing. We'll see how this goes. Although we have a big German push on this side. Should be, uh, He's facing the wrong way. He's actually going away from where these guys are firing. Rifle Grenade's going off. Might get a kill. So very close. Might be able to get on the retreat. That's a that's a very good MG if he kills it. Hot damn. That's another unit with no veterancy. Again, pack guns still lying in wait in the back. I, I think the pack guns need to deploy a little more. But it's funny because this 17-pounder has been waiting. So this so the AT guns are just lying in wait this entire game. Panzer IV slowly moving up. Uh, we're moving up one pack gun. I think the second one should move up to guard its flank. Mass Panzerfaust could go out. He does do it, but he is running over his men. Panzer IV still engaging. Firefly coming on over now. Again, the Crocodile can only use the flamethrower from the front. So getting behind it is not... And staying behind is not a bad move. Pack Gun needs to move on up. Nice fire attack here. Pack Gun could provide for support. Good shot right there against Great Ears. Where the hell are the Panzer Great Ears? Still at base. Okay, he's probably microing his men. He might have... He just lost the Great Ears squad, I think. Pack Gun's still over here. But he needs to deploy the other one. They're so spread out. The Firefly is just going to move up and kill it. Now, if he's lucky, he'll move up the pack gun and maybe gets a lucky few shots on it. Alas, he won't. He'll escape. Real Engineers coming on in. This thing is screwed. It is it is dead in the water right now. Pack guns need to move up. He does have flares going out. So he does have some... Uh, I think he's trying to identify where the um, wrecks are because he deployed one of these. Uh, it deploys a quick flare. He needs to move over the packs right now. This guy needs to move it over right now. And I'm surprised. Okay, here's infantry moving up. Move up the packs. Take it out. You need to do this right now. Before this before this behemoth gets up. Because as soon as this thing is able to move again, it can charge those packs very quickly. Now fire with the pack. Pack gun is not ranged because there's a fucking bush in its way. I don't understand why he's not moving up the packs. He's blobbing right now. Come on, man. Move up your packs. Ridiculous. Come on. You have so oh, now he moves it up. Oh, okay. I should probably move that up. That's my bad. Anyway, uh, additional... Okay, finally. This is a bad move. Don't put them on top of each other. Also, again, you have smoke. You have smoke. You can do recon. You have recon. Or move up the MG. For fuck's sakes, what the hell are you doing? Anyway, uh, we have a stew going in. I don't understand why. Flamethrower is in range, by the way, of this pack, I believe. Double pack, finally moving in. How amazing would it have been if you moved it in a little bit earlier? Come on! They both miss! Use smoke! Get recon! You motherfucker, shoot it! 
He, oh, he's no, he can't see it anymore. He can't see it anymore. Oh my god, that is so dumb. That is so dumb. Oh, x you had you had that kill in the bag and you fucked it up. Meanwhile, we have a Stug for some... I don't understand why he's displaying a Stug. You have enough for a Panther, but fuck it. We're going with a Stug for the walls. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, middle's been decapped by the, and recapped by the Brits. Uh, the Germans do have the fuel, which, again, it's insane because he's really just doing this to screw over the Brits at this point. Even though... Honestly, and I'm being honest, honestly, like, he doesn't need the fuel for himself. I mean, he's doing it more than harm the Brits, absolutely. Now he has an MG here, so it's covered by another infantry push. Plus, the flamethrower is facing downward. Yeah, he'll, he'll be fine. Pack Unseed healed. Again, I don't understand why he's not reacting faster. Like, he needs to heal this stuff and bring it up. This pack gun, like, it's it's so it's so annoying. It really is. Because, again, we know where his armor is. It's on the other side of the map. Yeah, he still has all the pack guns over here. If if he was more reactionary, uh, or not reactionary, well, pr proactive, I should say, he would move the pack guns over to the other side and beat them over there. So that that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Pack guns, again, this thing is, ha it's, it's going to be back up. Your, your Panzer IV sacrificed itself for no fucking reason. Gammon Bomb blows up Grand Ears on the front because he's not paying attention. I don't know what the hell he's doing. But he's literally... He had the win in his hands and he's throwing it like a... Into the water. He's literally throwing his win into the water. Why aren't you moving up your pack guns? You're literally sending your infantry to die otherwise. Come on, man. This is childish, really dumb mistakes you're making and I don't understand why. Meanwhile, again, fuel's being decapped. We did, uh, Star got recapped, so at least he's putting pressure on the Brits. Uh, also, why aren't you moving your pack gun and hitting this? Like, you could use your Pioneer Squad to hit it over here. Like, there's all these little plays you could be doing, but I, I, like, and I understand if he was busy with something, but he's not. I, like, I'm watching, like, hold on. Like, again, if we go over to follow camera, like, he's looking around, and we can see Fog of War. He's looking at stuff, but he doesn't use recon. He's moving over here, but again, he's constantly going after this fuel. Dude, it's not important. It really isn't at this point. He's building a bunker here. He's looking at nothing. Okay. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out why or what he's doing at this point. Okay, you got that. Great. Great. But you know they still have all the stuff in mid. And you have a you have an MG on top of it, which is weird. I guess you're trying to protect it from a gammon bomb. Well, he's a vicar. He's awesome. Yeah, it's... it's Okay, he sends infantry in here by itself. Oh, my God. Okay, we're, well, I'm tired of following his camera. Because uh, he, he's, he's sending stuff in without looking at it. Like, if you're going to do a big push, do a big push. Um, But, yeah, meanwhile, the Brit is also being very defensive. He's not moving all that much. But, to be fair, he doesn't really. He has to just focus on guarding this point and the other... Uh, uh, trying to get over here, but he's not going to. Um, yeah. I, I see a big move play. Crocodile and Firefly move on. They could annihilate all of this. Honestly, he still has this. Um, I don't think it's close enough, but he... It, God, if it was, a direct strike would be amazing right here. Croc... Again, all the armor's leaving. It's like, well, peace. We're not gonna fight your damn war. Because why would we? Why would we fight this? Uh, meanwhile, they're actually in perfect flanking position to hit it. He's getting another Panzer IV, which is ridiculous. He needs a Panther. Honestly, I, I think a Panther would go very well. Grandiers, hi, I don't understand what the Grandiers are doing over here. Is he moving up a pack gun? You can literally pa fire a pack gun at it. Like, seriously, the, the Grandiers are providing you sight, I assume, right? Nope, no, just barely out of sight. Big push in mid. No pack guns or anything stopping it. You know what would be great? These pack guns. What are you like, What are you doing? You see this. Also, weird angle, by the way. Like, at this weird side. Like, for me, fighting like this is a little more even. In any case, pack guns uh, still over here. <laughs> Guys, the armor is over here. Let's not move it as the crocodile literally walks through our lines and burns our men. Anyway, this crocodile is literally just killing everything. And also, oh my god. We do have sector artillery coming in, but you know. It's fine. Anyway, lots. The two pack guns. 
Oh, no. He's actually hitting hit by his own artillery. You know what? He deserves it. He absolutely deserves friendly fire. Holy mackerel. Hey, guys, don't worry. Pack guns are still over here. They're fine. All the armor's over here. And he rage quit. He rage quit because he killed himself. That game is so frustrating because he had it. He had this in the bag and he didn't play it. Like, oh my god, that is so... Like, he had a smoke! He had a smoke! He could have dropped a smoke for the pack gun to get sight. Like, there's so many things he could have done. But yeah, Exorito had that victory in the bag and then threw it into the river. He literally threw it into the creek. But uh, most damage, Exorito is, again, doing very well with those pack guns, stuff like that. I, I, again, he just doing damage. He was doing very well with his kills, and he had a lot of units. He just threw it. He just started sending men without watching them and stuff like that. And it's if you're getting to a push, make sure they're watching. Like, uh, I know it's a lot to watch in a one v one, but he was jumping all over to like the wrong parts, and I, he, he like for so many times he was going for this fuel, but the Brit had a full army and was fine with fuel, even with the Germans capturing that. So, I, I don't know. Uh, I, again, also Panzer IV, fine, but if you keep getting Panzer IVs, maybe get a Panther, because they can at least can fight uh, a Firefly. Not necessarily over, like, can't win it uh, if it's if, if Firefly gets every shot off right and stuff like that, but it can still defeat Fireflies. Also, uh, DGF, good strikes there. You did lose quite a bit of infantry early on, but I feel like the better you got, even and to be fair... If Extrito would have done those plays, he probably could have beat you. But you did at least save your crocodile. You did heal it, so I will give you credit. And you did come in with a nice flank at the end, so good job there. And also, good job, Extrito, for friendly fire. That that could not have gone better, like seriously. But in any case, guys, that's game. I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Being Gray Shot17, reminding you to submit those replays, plays of the weeks, and challenge ideas. Uh, either through my email or through the comments down below. But otherwise, guys, I'll see you all next time. Wait a second. Before you guys go, I have a couple people I need to give a shout out to because they are so amazing, awesome, and just really supportive of my content. Those people include Malam, Ace, White Hot D, Josh, Folkford, Javi, Jofo, Joey, Junior Chicklis, Little Koosh, Moustache, Only Play Apples, Pyro Shark, Streak and Wookie, GTA, Jacob Oswai, and Kevin Gao. Thank you guys so much for your incredible support. You guys are amazing. This has been Grayshot17, and I'll see you guys next time.